Hello and welcome to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes Grand Arena Championships Season 17, Week 2, Round 3. My name is Boma Fett. I'm currently 5 and 0, oh, and I was traveling this week, and so I was not able to record my voiceover while I was doing my battles, so you're going to get commentary after the fact. My opponent this round was Nefzen, and I was unable to scout Nefzen ahead of time because of my travel schedule. So I just let my defense ride from the previous match and hoped that that would get me through. So let's take a look at the defense that my opponent set. So here in the top zone, we've got a Bosque Squad, Geonosians, Bastila Jedi, and this Relict Resistance Squad that just isn't very good. Nefzen is going for Rey but doesn't have her yet. Here in the bottom zone, we've got a Newt Squad, a Padme Squad, and a full Relic 7 Darth Revan squad. But here's the thing about this Darth Revan squad. The characters are slow. I mean, like, slow, slow. Let me show you this. Darth Revan has a 254 speed. That is a really slow Revan. Bastila is a little bit faster. She's at 268, and Malik is right in between them. He's at 263. So I wanted to use my Darth Vader here as a counter, but with those slow speeds, Vader will not work. So I had to come up with something different. I considered taking in a Burner Squad and then taking in Vader, maybe get their cooldowns just right so that Darth Revan would go first, which is what you need for the Vader counter, but I just wasn't confident I'd be able to make that work, and so instead I chose to go in with my General Skywalker. Now this is not a counter that I normally do, and as you can see my Rex is only gear 12, so I'm a bit undergeared, at least on one character. Ideally for this counter, you want Rex to go first, and then he'll do the arm cross thing, put the tenacity up, and that gives turn meter to Fives, and Fives goes second, and he calls General Skywalker to assist, and then General Skywalker goes third and gets rid of Bastila. Unfortunately, my General Skywalker is just a tiny bit faster than my Rex, and so my turn order is not quite right for this counter. So I wasn't sure that this was going to work, but it was the best bet that I thought I had. So I took it in. I go after Bastila and I just do a basic here. I didn't want to do the AoE and trigger fear from Malik. So Skywalker is down pretty quickly. We get the sacrifice, but then Rex goes down. So it's up to Skywalker to solo them. I take out Bastila. Get down Revan, and now it's one on one. Oh, he almost went down there, just barely won that one. 46 banners is terrible, but against a Relic 7 Darth Revan squad, I was just happy to get through it. The rest of this defense doesn't look that tough. I've got Jedi Revan to go against this Padme squad, and I take in Old Ben as my third. The third doesn't really matter much in this matchup. Mark Anakin, big hit. Luckily I dodged the kick to the face there. We're going to do mind tricks here with Kenobi. We'll pass turn meter to Yoda. And Yoda will take out Anakin. Now I'm waiting for the mark to come back around for Padme, although without Kenobi here it doesn't really matter. 
I can hit Padme anytime I'd like. But here's the mark. We go ahead and put that on her. May take a while to work her down. Pass turn meter to Yoda again. And now I just want to recover some protection. So I call Revan. And a 53 here. Versus this Newt squad, I'm going to take in Bastila, Ezra, and Kanan. And my thinking here is, number one, I've got two Dispels, one from Bastila and one from Ezra. That will let me dispel the damage immunity from Droidica so that I don't have to worry about the big hits from Droidica as much. But secondly, the protection up and the tenacity up will prevent Dooku from getting any stuns against them. So we start off going after Droidica, and this Droidica is not as tough as some other Droidicas I've faced recently, and goes down pretty quickly. Now Dooku hides them both, but if you hide both of them, you might as well hide neither of them. I get the stun on Dooku, and he's down real quick. Now it's just a matter of killing Newt a couple of times. There's once. And there's twice. So 54 banners, they didn't get through the extra bonus protection. Easy win. Now, what is in the back? Garbage. It's complete garbage in the back. So I shifted back to the top zone. And I went after the Geonosians with Palpatine, Vader, and Thrawn, my standard counter here. This squad will almost always get me a 53 or a 54 against Geonosians. It's just completely routine. A Force Crush, followed by Merciless, that brings Spy out of hiding. Throw the Saber at Spy and kill him. Get an ability block against the Alpha. Now here, either one I hit is going to counterattack, so the Brute counterattacks. I do a Force Crush against Sunfac, that prevents him from counterattacking. And then I get rid of the Brute. Now I'm going to Fracture the Alpha, that will prevent the Alpha from bringing back the Brute. Get some stuns here with Palpatine. I've still got the Ability Block on the Alpha, so he still can't bring back the Brute. I'll pass turn meter here and go into Merciless again. Bye bye Alpha. Force Crush. And bye bye Sunfac. 54 banners. So next up will be the Bastila squad. And I have my Darth Revan available. I usually put Darth Revan on defense. But because I just let my defense roll over from last round, I have Darth Revan for offense. So as you would expect, I'm going to start with the fear. And then here I'm trying to decide, do I do more fear or do I just attack? Everybody's already got fear, so why put fear again? So I just attack Yoda. I'm going to try and get rid of Yoda as quickly as possible. There are a couple of counter-attacks, so my Darth Revan's hurting a little bit. But Yoda's gone now. Next, I'm going to go after Basti. And she's kind of thick because of all the extra protection up that she gets, but Darth Revan makes quick work of her. And then bye-bye Ezra. So 53 banners there. Next up, we're going to go after this resistance squad, and because the defense in the back is so weak, I've got tons for offense. So I've got my Padme just sitting here. I might as well use her, right? So Anakin is going to go first, and I'll just do the AOE here, get protection up on everybody. 
and I'm not quite sure why I did it. I was trying to decide who to go after here, so I'm thinking in my head, who do I attack? And I think I went after Poe because he was the squishiest, and I thought I could get him out really quickly. Oh, that scary Rose Tico attack. So now I have to go after Finn because Finn is taunting. But I get rid of the taunt, and then Poe goes down. And we're almost through Finn. Rose keeps getting attacks. She's taking some banners. Finn is down, and Rose is down. 53 on that one. All we have left in this zone now is the Bosk Squad. And I've got my CLS, Han, and Chewie. So I'm going to go ahead and take them here. Normally I split this up to give myself more depth. And I do CLS with 3PO and Chupio. And I do this. I do Kira with Han and Chewie. But I don't really need to do this in this matchup. Because of that garbage in that back zone, I don't need that extra depth. So I swap out Kira and put CLS in, and I take in the full CLS Han Chewy squad. Start off by stunning Bosk, and then we're going to stun Django Fett, and then go after Boba. And unfortunately, he dodged. I could have had all three of them stunned there, but Boba dodged the shot from uh, from Han. Boba goes down quickly. We stun Bosk again. And Django's down once. He did get the burning out, but now Django's down twice. And stun Bosk again. And stun Bosk again. Guys, put tenacity on your Bosk. You have to have a high tenacity Bosk. He doesn't do any good if he's stunned the whole time. 54 banners. Great banner recovery on that squad. I love it. Now on to the fleet zone. And you can see we've got Malevolence and Negotiator. But look at that Malevolence fleet. That is a weird Malevolence fleet. And I didn't realize it at the time. And so I kind of made a tactical error here. And I, I thought, you know, I don't like doing mirror matches. And so I'll do my malevolence against his negotiator and my negotiator against his malevolence. So I start with my malevolence against his negotiator. I do the standard comp that I usually do here, which is the two droid ships, the three Geonosians, and then IG-2000. And I left the Houndstooth on the bench just in case I needed to clean up something. And now, I actually thought that this comp was going to be easy to get through because there was no kind of tank on the other side. He wiped out my Vulture Droid really quickly. He's gotten a bunch of debuffs on my Sunfac. I do get out the buzz droids here, but I think I kind of made a mistake here by focusing down on Anakin. I know that that's kind of the standard thing you do is you try and get rid of Anakin as quickly as possible, but it didn't really work here. I think I could have taken out Snips maybe early on and that would have reduced the damage coming from the other squad. Here I have a chance to bring in a reinforcement, and for some reason I didn't. I'm not quite sure why, but I, I didn't. Usually I'll bring in Spy there, and for some reason I did not. He gets his ultimate really quickly, and I'm just in trouble here. <laughs> I mean, look at that. That was, that was ridiculous. So here I do bring in my reinforcement. I bring in my spy. And of course, I did not get the taunt where I wanted it on Anakin. 
and that's all she wrote. It was bad. It was really bad. So at this point, I figured I was not going to get the full clear. I did just want to clear his negotiator fleet. So I take in my negotiator fleet, but I was foolish. I should have paid more attention to how damaged his ships were. He had ships that were about to die. So I did go back and forth here about debating whether I should be holding some of these ships and maybe splitting this fleet up so that I could try and take out that malevolence fleet. And I, I went round and round and round, but I really, had I paid more attention to how damaged his ships were, it would have been obvious to me that I didn't need all of the reinforcements that I took in. So here at the beginning, he's going to get a whole bunch of attacks in a row. His fleet was turn meter loaded, and they just, they go off. But here I get the AoE from Anakin. Snips is almost dead. Anakin goes down, AoE, and the other two are down. Didn't need any reinforcements, 42 terrible banners, but just happy to get through it. But I was also kicking myself because I had Ahsoka and Rex and Plo Koon on the bench there. I could have used them in this battle here. Luckily, I did save myself the Houndstooth. So I put together a hodgepodge of a fleet. I do have a couple of tanks here. I've got a little bit of offense. I'm just hoping maybe I can get to the ultimate and Tarkin's ultimate can wipe out the other fleet before the Malevolence's ultimate wipes out my fleet. I put up the taunt here. I really want to get rid of Kylo Ren. Kylo is the big threat on the other side. So I focus on him. And luckily he was kind of squishy. I have no idea what Kylo's shuttle does here. I'm having to read what each ability does because that's a ship that I just never use. Bring in uh, Lando's Falcon here. I know that that's one that you should usually wait and bring it in later, but compared to the other ships, I figured I might as well get this out here. It'll get me a little bit more damage. I don't really know what this ship does either, but it took out Kylo Ren unmasked, so I was happy. So the Emperor shuttle comes in. I really don't know that ship either. Um, again, I'm having to read abilities here from Kylo's shuttle. My focus now is on the two bounty hunter ships. They seem like they're the damage dealers. I've almost got Cad Bane out of there. I heal up the, uh, the Houndstooth here. And there goes Cad Bane's ship. Now I'm going to focus on the IG-2000. Again, having to read through the different abilities because I don't know them. And I've got Boba Fett's Big Bomb. And I lost my Kylo Shuttle. There goes IG-2000. Now I just need to get rid of the Emperor's Shuttle. And I bring in Poe Dameron who I never use at all, but I've heard that his ship hits hard, so I brought him in in order to get a bit more offense, really trying to get through this fleet before the Malevolence gets its ultimate, and there it is. I actually got it done, 58 banners. I was really surprised that I was able to clear both fleets, really surprised. 
So on to the back zone. It's time to take out the trash. I go after the Phoenix squad first. I've got Wampa and I do have Hermit Yoda available. So I throw Hermit Yoda on that squad as well. Probably wasn't necessary. In fact, I'm sure it wasn't necessary, but better safe than sorry. So Wampa, of course, does double damage against Rebels, which makes him great against Phoenix. I go after Zeb first. He's really the threat. He can daze and he can stun. Get rid of Zeb. Now Kanan is taunting, so I have to go after Kanan. But he is down quickly. And one more hit, and Hera is down. And a 55. Next up is the Ewoks, and of course, Ewoks means nest. So especially when there's no low gray, low gray's the one who can daze nest and prevent the counter attacks. There's no low gray, a nest solo is in the works. I just threw this on auto, I'm just going to fast forward through this battle. So 55 banners there. Next up is the Karth squad, and a great counter to Karth are the Kylo Rens. And so I take in my Kylo Ren Unmasked with First Order Executioner and Wat Tambor. This is a squad I usually use to counter Night Sisters, but since there were no Night Sisters on defense, I take it in here. And the reason the Kylo Rens are so good against Karth is that they take reduced damage from percent health attacks. And a lot of the Karth squad's attacks are percent health, especially the damage over time. So I put the taunting tech on Kylo Ren. I put the weapons tech on Executioner. I go after Mission first. And I've got Wat Tambor there for all of his healing. Now I do have the taunt here from Zalbar that I have to get through. And Zalbar does do a lot of counter-attacking. But they can't really do much damage here against Kylo Ren Unmasked. Here the big hit gets rid of the taunt. I'm able to go back after mission. I decide to stun Karth, and there goes Mission. Now I go after Karth, and bye-bye Karth. So now just trying to get everybody healed all the way up. It'll take a few big hits to get rid of Zalbar. Everybody's healed and a 54. To finish this off, we have this complete garbage First Order squad. When you think First Order, you think Jedi training Rey. So I take in Rey, R2, and BB-8. Although I got BB-8 and R2 in the wrong slots there. I'm so used to BB-8 being to Rey's right. Uh, I end up, you'll watch, I end up actually clicking on the wrong droid here in just a moment when I'm trying to call an assist. Here's a burning, and now right here I call on R2 instead of BB-8 just because muscle memory is to click on the droid to the right instead of the droid to the left. Doesn't really matter, we got rid of both of them pretty quickly, although I have taken some damage here on BB-8 that maybe I could have avoided. Um, so that's a little unfortunate. I'm not going to get to Illuminated Destiny. I probably could have brought in Finn instead of one of the droids and he would have given me some healing. But one banner isn't that big a deal. 53 is fine. 
So that gave me a 2640 for my final score. That's not terrible, but it's not great. I did feel that that kind of left the door open for Nefzen. If he was able to one-shot my defense, I could lose this. So let's see how Nefzen did against my defense. So there it is, only one zone cleared. Here in the bottom, we have two tries against GK, no tries against Grievous or Malik. In the top zone, two tries to get through Newt, one shot against Hux, one shot against Poggle, and one shot against Bosk. And against the Fleets, two against the home one without getting them down, one shot against Thrawn. So the final score is 2640 to 1582. I would like to say thank you to Nefzen for the match, and thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next round.